Greetings, good people of Earth. Uh, thought, a moment of peace, um, a moment of prayer, however you want to meditate on it. So take some time, sit here together, have some peace, give thanks for everyone who's come and gone in our path and give thanks for all the moments that have led us to this day and um, in this crazy moment of catastrophe and chaos in our world, we just give thanks to be present, just to be aware of our presence and to be in control of our presence. Okay. How are we? How are we? So Facebook Live. So I'm gonna give um I'm gonna give thanks to a lot of people before we start. Um, first and foremost, the Perez Art Museum Miami. Um, I've been a proud teaching artist for the past five years, um, and it's been an amazing experience every step of the way. It's been uh, it's been heartwarming to serve the community. So thank you, Franklin. Thank you, um, Anita. Thank you, the team, Denise and Andrew. Just thank you, everyone. Thank you to the TA team. Thank you. Um, so we'll start from the beginning. I am a teaching artist now, but my time started um, maybe seven years ago, six, seven years ago, when um, when I graduated from FIU. I, I'm a proud DASH alumni, Mr. Gillum, DASH crew. And um, I went off to Miami-Dade for social studies, um, social sciences, and I wanted to leave my art life behind. I was tired of art. I'm a lifelong artist. I'm born to an artist, so I've been making and creating my entire life. And it wasn't something I saw as a talent wasn't something that I really saw as anything different. I thought everybody just made stuff on their spare time. So um, I went into anthropology. I found a space where um, people enjoyed other human beings and people enjoyed just watching people. There's a space for nosy people. So I figured it fit me well. And um, I thought that would be my career. I thought that would be my way. And um, shortly after graduating from FIU, and um, teaming up with some amazing professors, Dr. Tafari, Professor Tafari, um, Ida Tafari, the late, the great, Dr. Stevens from the psychology department, and, um, and just kind of rerouting my life around the idea of really being present as myself and observing life from the perspective that I have, the unique perspective that I have here on Earth. And um, I ran into Eddie, so we can start with the slide. Um, start from the beginning. I ran into Eddie. He, um, he was married to a friend of mine, and she insisted that I meet him. And I started working on these amazing um, pieces um, with MLK, Moving Lives of Kids. And um, I loved them. And so that's kind of how I started my route back to myself and back to my art life. Uh, Charles R. Drew's mural, wow. This is a beautiful memory. Um, it was my first project, so I was personally managing the project. It was a sketch in my sketchbook, and then out of nowhere, um, it became real. Some amazing artists, um, Smurf, um, Jamal Clark, and a young artist that I can't remember his name were on this team. And of course, um, Cecilia from MCI was an amazing support. Shonda Pagan, an amazing support. And so this was, this was just an amazing adventure. It's a gigantic wall at the school. This is Zenden. This is actually still at Charles R. Drew. Um, most of my commissions are there through non-for-profits. I work with them um, on whatever scale they have. And um, I think it's a beautiful project to just uplift the neighborhood every chance they get and any chance I get to be part of it, I love it. So this was my first solo mural. I say solo because um, with the mural projects, we bring in an entire team. This gentleman here you see is um, Angel. He's an angel. He's an amazing part of MCI and the Liberty City community. 
um, right around Charles Archer. And um, so they bring in volunteers from, you know, banks or nurses, just any groups of people, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, it doesn't matter. Um, they bring in all these volunteers to come in and fill in the space like a color, um, you know, like a coloring book. And then us artists, we're there um, just kind of going back and etching in things. And so this was my first solo project with this beautiful woman there as a yoga piece in the middle. And then we had football and basketball represented on the side. And it's still up. It's still it's still there. The kids still enjoy it. And here we are. Um, so before we move on with this piece, I just want to kind of go into a little bit of um, wow, just a little bit of understanding because this piece is very deep and very personal to me. Um, this road to this piece was was paved in. In a lot of pain, in a lot of pain. Marie, how are you, Marie? Yes, yes, the Marie still up, still up. Um, Ozzy, how are you? Who is my favorite artist? Oh my God, you're asking. I think I can best relate to Basquiat on a lot of levels um, in the sense that his art was not so much um refined it was mo it was just like this impulse that was like raging in him that had to come out um and whatever way he could do that whether it's you know sticker or lip gloss or whatever i can find sometimes i have to write i have to um i have to channel energy out of me i have a lot of anxiety a lot of my work um does revolve around the ideas of anxiety. You could probably hear in my voice. I deal with a lot of anxiety and um, people feel that it's associated with a lack of um, presence. And sometimes I wonder, but I find that no matter how confident or comfortable I am, there's just a lot of energy always in me. I don't feel like um, my anxiety is in relation to anything. It's just, I, I always have a lot of energy. and so. Um, Oh my God, my favorite artist. I'll have to get back to you on that. I can't even go there. <laughs> I can't even go there. You're asking a lot of me. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite, so we'll just skip that. I don't have a favorite artist. Um, I respect and love them equally. I'm trying to think of, but everyone's flooding my brain right now. Um, Michelle Okadoner, I lie. I lied. Michelle Okadoner is my favorite artist. And I can say this truly because I just, I was introduced to her work um, not too long ago. And um, I can truly say that it blew me away. It captured my heart. And when I saw her, I geeked. And I never geek. I'm always cool. Um, but when I saw Michelle Okadoner at the Basquiat opening, actually, I geeked. I couldn't. I, I, I was standing next to her and I was just, I, I didn't know what to say. My sister, um, my sister, she was like, isn't that the artist you really like? Like, you want me to take a picture? No, don't touch her. No, walk away. So Michelle Okadona got me to geek. So that, that would be my favorite artist. She's so beautiful. And I just love her, her, um, I love her connection with nature. I think I can... I I needed something to channel my grief through. And Shonda calls me up, Shonda Pagan, um, formerly of MCI. And she calls me up and she says that she has a mural project. And um, I tell her I'll work with her and because I need something to get away um, from my pain. And um, so I did the Zenden. I put myself in a peaceful place and I channeled life through. And shortly after that mural project, I felt so good. It was such an awesome feat. Um, I cut my hand. I, I had a horrible accident where I cut my hand. I cut three fingers and I went through, <clears throat> I went, I, I put the knife down a little too vigorously to run outside and save some burgers that were burning on the grill um, for my daughter's birthday. So me trying to throw my entire self with nothing left to give into a birthday party that consisted of her and two friends because she has two friends that she's super intimate with and um she's a very intimate person and um 
and me trying to do go above and beyond. And um, I cut my hand and it just stopped my life. It stopped everything. It just made life so clear. I no longer had this ability that I'd always taken for granted to draw and to write. Um, I could not use my right hand for months. Um, the accident happened in June. I believe my goal was to cartwheel by September. I think it took until December until I was cartwheeling again. And um, if anybody knows how much I love cartwheeling, you understand. <laughs> so um, this journey just kind of came out of me, just trying to be present, be at peace, and use what I can to channel what I need to. So I took up more photography. Um, I built a lot of albums from just local parks, the beach, very natural scenes. Um, I just put myself at peace with water, with nature, and just kind of gave myself permission to be slow and to go into slow motion and to not be um, perfect, but to definitely always be present. Because with this injury, what I realized, I wasn't present in that moment. I was so busy worrying about the burgers that I didn't realize that I had um, very sharp knives in my hand. And I went to slam it down, you know, frustrated and I took off and, um, you know, it took a major operation to reconnect my ligaments, my nerves, it, my hand is still numb. And, um, but it did, it did create a space for me to think of where my art will go from here. So I took up calligraphy, um, after I got to the point where I can write again for more than a couple of minutes without my hand aching. And so I took up um, calligraphy and um, I realized I didn't need to draw. That's when I came to that realization. I've always drawn, I've always been an illustrator, but it's not a need for me. Um, what was a need for me was writing. Writing was a need for me. And I love visual symbols around writing, but I didn't need to replicate. Um, or I didn't need to draw, I didn't need to produce things um, that were visually stimulating in that way. But calligraphy became my, my, my new art. Um, just trying to get my dexterity back and just trying to get my penmanship back. And um, thank God I didn't cut the, the, you know, the, these two important ones I was able to write. Um, I'm thanking um, Shalane Murray Shalane Murray, thank you so much. She is a yoga instructor and um, she's also a very talented um, physical therapist who got my hand back in place. Lots of yoga and um, lots of lots of patience. Thank you. Shire, I love you. I love you. Uh, no, I'm not I'm not allowed near any sharp objects. No. Um, my children and my whole family go screaming when I pick up a knife now and not for the reasons that I would have thought. Um, so <laughs> no sharp objects. So dark maternal matters. Um, so this is like the root of dark maternal matters. This, this, this channeling of, of grief, this trying to understand the world that's happening around me. Mind you at the time, um, at the time, my my children are growing up, and I'm watching um, black bodies drop. Um, Trayvon Martin, Samir Rice. I'm trying to figure out why is it that I'm still in Miami. I don't want to be here, but I am. I'm gonna check on my sage because it's like sizzling over here. Yes, so we always have much sage. Okay, we always get the energy right whenever we have something to say. Make sure we're in a line, right? Make sure we're channeling the best of ourselves. Um, where was I? Yeah, so I just I just started thinking of maternal anxiety and I started thinking of what's happening and I started channeling my research in um that I had done with, you know, at FIU and a lot of um, maternal matters came up in anthropology. A lot of maternal matters came up in psychology, just trying to understand how um, the world affects women and how women affect the world. And um, and so, um, yeah, so this series is coming out of grief, but the goal kind of plays around with the idea of just these golden linings, these, these just spaces of illumination, these spaces that we just have to 
allowed to um, reconnect us, if that makes sense, you know? It's important that we're reconnected, um, especially in grief, especially in darkness, and especially in pain. It's important that we call out. It's important that we reach out. It's important that others keep reaching out to us. Um, I thank Shire um, this morning for just being that beacon, Shire Reagan, um, that beacon of, of compassion that kept ringing in the back of my head. Because after a series of, of trauma and pain, I was completely disconnected. I didn't want to um, really feel what was going on in this world anymore. I just wanted to kind of like mind my own business, take care of my family and move forward. But um, she reminded me in many ways that we are responsible for what happens next. And she empowered me to understand that um, we must have something to say or will die slowly, you know? So Dark Maternal Matters, um, it's it's really loaded. Um, we can move on to the next slide. It's really loaded. It's a deep place for me. This project is like, I can say maybe a year and a half ago, I started really putting it into, like putting it together. Um, I just pulled out my journals and I pulled out, um, sketchbooks, and I pulled out everything that I had been just jotting down and throwing away, jotting down and putting away. And I started compiling them and using my, you know, um, using my hands, um, my my re refurbished hand um, to put down these words and really make them pop. And I wanted to work with Black, and I wanted to see how reflections work with Black, and I wanted to see how metallics work with Black. Um, anyone who knows me knows I'm really into astrology. I am a metal monkey. I am born in 1980, so all the metal monkeys out there, right? Swords up. Um, I evil bull, right? <laughs> so we are um, we are born into a time where we're warrior monkeys, and um, you can call us drunken monkey at times where it doesn't really seem like we're too focused on much, but we're very intentional and. Um, and so the metal is something I always gravitate towards. And this is a photography piece. Some of the pieces are just documentation. Um, taking this journey, I just happened to want to document this journey. I started the journey with the actual cast. It is a cast of my belly from my second pregnancy, my firstborn son, Sage. And um, in November of last year, I started working on the cast. Before then, I was working on the pieces. In November of last year, um, before I start, let me go ahead and take this away. A little too much smoke. You'll pardon my, my delay. So my goal is not to set myself on fire tonight. So as as we've explained, I'm I'm a bit cumbersome when it comes to everything. Um so so this journey, um, I had to document it. Um and then it came a point for the centerpiece, and that became this belly. And um, November, I had a lot of issues with my my son. He was not doing well, and um, my family wasn't doing well. Marie, metal monkey. My family wasn't doing well because I wasn't present. I was still grieving. I was a year and a half into two years into grieving. Um, the passing of, of, of my mother figure. What was my mother? Molly, who passed in December, was my, my, my father figure. Um, she played the father role, the supporter, um, the provider. And, um, and by August of last year, I realized that M Molly was not doing too well. And um, November, she's in and out of hospitals, and I need to be there for her. 
but I also need to be there for my son and my family. And I also need to be present because I'm no longer present for myself because I'm so lost and um, I'm grieving by night. I'm teaching art by day. I have afternoon classes. There's very little time um, to really process what I'm going through. And I'm telling myself that I should be over it. I should move on. Um, you know, but that doesn't happen. That doesn't always happen. So I invite my son into my room, my little studio world, and I ask him to start working with me on this piece and to start giving me direction as to where he thinks I should go with it. And if I, you know, I was going to make it really simple. Um, and, um, he thought I should build more and, um, and so it started this series, um, really, because before that, I was just playing around with ideas, throwing together um, images, but it wasn't, it wasn't a series, you know, it wasn't an art piece, it was just me channeling. Um, so I was grateful for the centerpiece, um, bringing it all together, just these soft rose petals, um, and they're dry petals. I've dried petals since high school. I love it. I have dry petals all over the house um, at times. And um, they're dipped, dipped in gold paint. And um, the process was actually just a magical process, just sitting there with my son, just um, ignoring what seemed to me as ignoring um, what was happening in the outside world and just paying attention to how we're bonding. And um, I had to let go of a lot um, in the past couple of months. And uh, it allowed me to prepare myself for, for, for the passing of my second mother. Um, so, uh, so we have poems. Um, there's a lot of poetry in this series. Um, there's a lot of writing in this series. There's a lot of prayers and um, mantras. Um, I'm just channeling the best of, of human nature that I can. Um, and just really understanding that I am present. You know, me and Angela, another TA at the PAM, we speak a lot about our presence and how we are present and how what it means to be present in yourself as yourself, not as someone else, but really be present and take up your own space. And so a lot of the pieces do focus on just freeing ourselves from understanding that we're confined to these bodies and we're confined to these social norms and we're confined to these cultures, but we're not. Um, this work is really focused around, um, I guess, Processing anxiety and understanding that a lot of my anxiety comes from the fact that I, I'm very um, autonomous and um, I'm autonomous through many ways, but mainly through just my upbringing. Um, I'll, I'll go back a little bit into my upbringing. Um, I'm Haitian, Haitian American, um, born um, in Haiti, Port-au-Prince, Haiti. I was moved to Brooklyn, New York at the age of three by my father, and um, I was torn away from my mother and my country and everything I knew that was maternal at that point. And so um, I was reunited with my birth mother at 19. And um, till this day, we still have a lot to catch up on. Um, wow, Victoria, how are you? What is my dream project? Oh, wow. I want to say... Wow. Okay. What is my dream project? I do see a, um, a gigantic indoor dark mural space. Um, but as for dream project, I think I'm going into the direction of film. Um, I've always wanted to create films. I um, took some film script writing classes um, in college just for the fun of it. And I think that I'd like to see like a video piece, um, maybe um, maybe producing a dance video or music. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Alex. Yes, my people, my tribe. And I must say, I mean, I'm not trying to go away from the subject, um, but I must say the Perez Art Museum Miami is, so yeah, so I'm 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 in Brooklyn, New York, um, 84 to 88, 
And then um, abruptly, the whole family, I guess, decides that they want to move to Miami. Um, so we all moved to Miami. Um, my dad decided to move to Delray. So we were away from the family. And four months later, he passed. So I was right back with my aunts in Delray. And that was another layer to this piece. Um, when children suffer grief, it is imperative that adults step in and explain what's happening because a lot of my anxiety comes from this place of not knowing. My father um, went to church one night. He was a Jehovah's Witness. He went with my stepmother and he just never came home. And I was told he was at a friend's house and I was told a lot of different things. And I was a pretty quick cookie, so I realized very quickly that he was no longer with us from the tone of the adults around me. But um, so this is all wrapped up in grief, and it's all wrapped up in releasing um, the idea that this body in, in, like can really contain how we feel for someone, you know, that our relations have to end with these with these energies that have steered our lives you know um love you lori ah maternal matters lori you know how much this means to me and you know how much you've been inspiration yes let's keep going let's keep going And for the next couple of slides, we can kind of go through them. We can kind of just um, pan through them. Yeah. This is some photography. I just like to play around with um, the saturation. I have dark wood floors, and so it's nice to play around with. And this is the piece I recited for the um, art serve opening um, in January. And so again, art came to save my life. Um, we can go on. Um, art serve I had a deadline in December, and I swore to myself that if I could survive my mother's um, funeral, I would submit to this show. And at 11:55 or 59, I press send. <laughs> Um, on my last pieces um, to Mr. Ludlow Bailey. Thank you so much, giving thanks to Mr. Ludlow Bailey for saving me um, in a moment of terrible, terrible anguish and grief. And so I had something again to grab onto and something again to focus on. And so I had all these pieces ready and I was shocked because I don't readily produce work. So I rarely have things complete and ready. When um, there's a call, there's always scattered pieces of thoughts, but never a complete idea. So Mr. Bailey um, accepts my piece and I go to present my piece. Um, and this was how I wanted it, this, this, this stacked um, altar. And I go to present my piece um, at ArtServe and immediately he starts speaking to me on curation and how and I've known him for some years. Um, I followed him at the Arc, the Opalaka Arc, where I reside. Um, and I've really kind of just kind of sat back and figured I, I want everything to be perfect. And he's a Virgo. I'm a Virgo. You know, we don't do anything unless it's 100% perfect. And um, he starts telling me how he really sees, um, you know, he sees my art from a, a special light, but also how he really sees me as a storyteller and a curator and how my background can kind of focus me in that direction. And um, I really appreciate that insight and that he was so invested in one of the artists because there were so many artists there and there are so many awesome artists there. Um, so, yeah, so this this piece was really just me pouring out everything I had and rearranging my life to come to grips with this new world I have with no with no mommies. Um, like I said, my birth mother um, and I, we, we love each other. We don't have a strained relationship. We're very comfortable, but we met each other 20 years ago. So there's a lot of catching up to do. We can keep going. So 
So it was presented kind of like an altar and um, special thank thanks to um, Johnny Bess. He um, he was so kind to allow my piece into his space and his space was really a space dedicated to memorials and um, dedicated to um, T. Elliot was in that space and they both had um, passings, like recent passings um, or passings that they were still processing and grieving from, I believe both of their brothers. And so I felt so honored to be in that space, just to be in that space with um, with them and, and to, to share this little piece of, of comfort or I don't know, just to share in the, that, that feeling that after death is life, and um, a life can can still blossom after great disaster and grief. And these are some poem pieces collaged together. This piece that you're looking at now, the edges are um, actually burnt. Um, I think it's I think it's this piece up here, dark matter scattered through through time. Yeah, all the edges are all burnt um, and then lined with gold. And so I like a lot of fire in my work, too. I kind of play around with that. It's um, I, I like to burn edges. <laughs> I like to burn paper. <laughs> and this piece here is um, a photo piece of my beloved mom, my beloved mama, Mai, and um, just um, her, uh, I picked up some pieces from her 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 space after after her passing, and um, these doves, um, these love doves in the very front, were um, her jewelry cases, and so there's some you know some beautiful um, cherished memories in there, and you know just surrounding her with love. Um, I think I I I just set this up around New Year's just so she could be with us. And so we could have her face present. It's very important for me. Like I said, when my father passed, my family had a hard time processing. My father passes. Um, he's the youngest of the family and he passes first. And so it was really hard for the family to process it. So they got rid of all his pictures. And um, it was really hard for me to see them forget him. And um, in many ways, I was a reminder. I had his face um some of his mannerisms. And so um, it's important for me to show faces of those that were with us. Thank you, T. Elliot. Yes, yes, that room was really like a space of, 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 of healing. Yes, definitely. In fact, if I can tell a little backstory, um, I'm gonna be a little bit more vulnerable. Thank you, Lonnie, I love you. Um, my piece was not accepted to the show. In this, um, there was work to be done, and I w went to look for a space to put up a mural poem. Um, this belly piece was not accepted to the show. So, um, upon seeing Johnny's room and knowing the story of it being a memorial, I went gung ho. I went home, I went hard, I produced more things, I polished, I primped, I prepped, I did everything I needed to do um, to make this piece an entire piece. And um, and then, um, you know, I had been working with Mr. Bailey for um, uh, the, the end of the show, the final touches. Um, he allowed me to work with him in, in, in arranging the space, which I was so honored to even, you know, touch some of these artists' pieces. Like, I'm such a fan of Yellow Fort. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't touch it with my bare hands. <laughs> oh. um, I was so honored to be in the space and then to have, be given permission to, to lend my eye and to lend my, 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 my sensibilities to, to the space. I was just over the moon. And like I said, it saved my life. It saved me um, from, from very deep pain. And, um, and so I, I told him, I said, I want, I, I, I feel like this room is where my piece belongs. And um, 
And so I made some calls and saw if I can get um, my piece into the Haiti room. And um, that curator, he had already left for Haiti. And um, and then Mr. Bailey tells me that Johnny has a space and he's willing to share. And um, so thank you, Johnny. That was just an awesome an awesome way of reaching out, really connecting in my deepest moments of grief. Alan, ah. Oh no, there is no such thing. I, I've, ne I, I've never completed a piece in my life, okay? Um, my coworkers know this, because <laughs> I always have pieces just laying around and then some around and just moves or blows and everything goes up in the air and everyone gets a little crazy. Um, I love it. I love when what I thought was going to happen gets disrupted. And um, at my pace, um, no matter what's happening around me, because I have to be true to myself. I have to be authentic with what I'm really going through. I can't, um, just produce, um, pieces. I have to, I have to, I've always used my art to channel, um, my feelings, mainly my darkest of feelings. And I just, um, I didn't, I didn't want to share my darkness and my pain with the world. I want to make the world a better place, um, a happier place. But then I realized that your truth is the best you can do. And if you want to really mend this world, sharing your truth is about as magical as it comes, you know? And then and finally, my mamas, my mamas, this is both of them that, um, probably 20s in their 20s, 30s. Um, Marie was probably um, 26 in this image, I believe. And Rose was likely in her early 30s in this piece. So these are my late great mamas. Um, so I guess we're, um, we're done with the slide. Um, I guess I'll take any extra questions or any extra whatever. Um, God, this is so awesome. It's so good to have you guys here, here in my own space, right? It's like I've invited you guys over for like tea or whiskey. <laughs> I think we're all done with the slideshow. The slideshow. Are we still here? You're still rolling? Um, we're we're undoing. All right. So, gosh. Okay. So, uh, so I'm, I'm, I go on and on. I wanted to kind of touch up a little bit, if I have a little bit more time, on um, why I opened up with a meditation and why I opened up in this place of just um, of 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 peace. Um, this series also finishing it up and playing around with just still. I'm still working on pieces, as you can see. I have um, poetry pieces. Um, understanding culture as coded survival skills and understanding how us as Haitians, you know, um, in Haitian Flag Day, um, in Haitian Flag Month or Heritage Month we are in right now, um, us as Haitians, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this pandemic and how we really kind of, um, you know, we have seen this place before. We've been here before um, with the AIDS epidemic. and. Um, you know, as Haitians, we were the target of that AIDS epidemic. And so just thinking of this quarantine and kind of processing that and kind of coming from a place of peace and not fear in this moment, um, it really had me thinking of the correlations between how we grew up in quarantine as Haitian children. And we thought it was because our parents were super protective and psycho. 
But um, understanding what's happening right now and understanding how we were targeted here in Miami, Florida, you know, it's become clear that that was their, you know, their way of protecting us. We grew up away from a lot of social norms and um, a lot of what's happening um, in this world. We grew up in meditation and a lot of us grew up um, trying to channel the best of us just to make it through the day. Um, and trying to find who we are as firstborn or first raised generations here in America. And um, so, you know, in this moment, I just, you know, for those of us who've been here before, you know, I just hope that people stay calm, stay safe. You should always be vigilant with your hygiene. Like no one should ever have to tell you to pour off down your entire house always. Um, and thank you again. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Anita. Thank you, team. I don't know if we have any more time. I'm trying to wrap it up. Um, I love you guys. This was awesome. Thank you. Uh, let's do this again.